What's up everyone? I am back ish and I say ish because I honestly don't know how many videos I'll do or how often, but I have had a lot of requests to return to YouTube. So here I am. So I've recently rewatched all of my old videos just to get an idea of what my channel was like and what I've discussed. And while I found it insightful and heartfelt, which is what I intended, it was very, very, very boring. Really somber, monotone, no energy. And it's one of the reasons I stopped. Another reason was I just really didn't know where I fit in on YouTube, what my niche was. Once you start doing these videos, everybody gets it in their head that they'll be the next big YouTuber that has millions of viewers and gets paid to just talk to people on their phone. And everything's great and wonderful, but it really doesn't work out that way. Not unless you have that, I guess, YouTube entertainment factor. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not a makeup guru. I'm not a gamer. I'm not some clickbaity, you know, gossipy person. That's not why I'm here. And I was really reminded of that by the messages I would get from all of you, letting me know that in some way or another, my videos have inspired you or encouraged you. And that's why I did this to begin with. If you look on my Instagram, and if you're not following me, you should be, Just side note, it says in my profile to educate, encourage, and inspire. That's why I'm on YouTube. That's why I'm on Instagram, Facebook. That's why I do social media in general. I really don't get paid for this. I can monetize these videos, but I don't really do them. So I really don't make any money. It's more about making a difference what I hope I've done and what I hope to continue to do. So I'm back because I was reminded of that. Now, I don't know what videos I'll do again or how often, but I do have ideas. And one of them, many of you have asked, is for fitness videos. So I'm working with my trainer to get my body right first. And then we're gonna shoot some how-to instruction videos on really how to shape your body. Today, I think a great return to YouTube video will be a Q&A, just something simple, a little get to know me session. Because if you're gonna watch my videos, why not? Plus what I'm doing is I'm, at, I'm answering the most asked questions across all of my social media. So these are questions you've asked. Now I'm gonna start off on a bad note the most asked question I'm not going to answer today. And the reason is, is it's its whole separate own video. Basically dating. Do you like guys? Do you like girls? Do you like both? Can we date? Are you dating? Do you want to date? Do you want to get married? Are you married? Have you been married? Do you want to have kids? Do you have kids? What is sex like post-op? <laughs> Can we hook up? So many different ways for everybody to essentially shoot their shot. Which I respect that, we've all done it, but there's so much to unpack there. And my life experiences have been a lot different than most. So I think that's a great video on its own. So I'm gonna bypass that question and jump to the next one, which I'm combining two questions. And that is, how old are you? And at what age did you start transition? First of all, it's really, really inappropriate to ask a woman her age. She should never, ever have to reveal her true age. So I always say I am 27-ish. Yes? No? So I guess for educational purposes, I will reveal my real age which is 38. I know, right? How old do you think I am? Early 20s, really? I love you. Anyone who guesses that I look like I'm in my early 20s, I really do. I love you guys so much. If you guess early 30s, I still like you. Just not as much, but I still like you, kind of. If you can actually guess my real age, and if you dare to even say it, I don't like you at all. Like none, like you can, you can leave. Anyway, so I began my transition 
when I was 30. Technically, you could say 29. I started hormones at the end of 2011, but my birthday's in March, and I didn't really go full-time until July of 2012. So I was really 30, so eight years ago. A little side note for those of you watching this video that are really kind of lost, not knowing what I'm talking about with transition and hormones, I am a very, very proud and happy transgender woman. So that's not really your speed. If you're only here to be hateful, you don't really want to learn anything, you can click the little X button and find your way out. Bye. On to the next question. It's asked in a lot of different ways. And it comes down to what surgeries have you had? And that's asked in forms of have you had FFS? Are you post-op or are you pre-op? Are you fully transitioned? How big is it? Um, do you still have it? And so many other inappropriate things. So I'm going to preface my answer by this or with this. It is none of your business. None. None. It's very, very inappropriate to ask anybody about any procedures they have had done because it's none of your business. You wouldn't walk up to a cis woman on the street and ask her if she's had a nose job or if she's had a boob job because you think they look amazing. Trans people do not exist to fill your curiosity on genitalia and gender. That's just how it is. So going forward, try not to ask those questions because it's, it's not appropriate. Having said that, if you've watched any of my previous videos or followed me at all over the years, you'll know that I have openly shared all of these things with you because I set out from the very beginning to really document and share my entire journey to help others along with theirs. I know when I was thinking about, you know, gender confirmation surgery, I was watching videos on YouTube of other girls talking about theirs. That's actually how Carolina and I became really good friends. Um, her channel is Caroland. We kind of do it for each other, really. So we find resources and know what to expect. But just a quick like recap. In 2012, I had a trachea shape and a breast augmentation which means, yes, I got implants and I had the trachea shave is where they shaved on the cartilage to get rid of the Adam's apple because I had a huge Adam's apple. You can see it in old pictures. Um, in 2015, I did have gender confirmation surgery. I went to Montreal, Canada with Dr. Brassard and was a very terrifying but amazing experience. So yes, I have a vagina and I love it. But that doesn't mean I've fully transitioned. That really isn't a thing. Everybody's body is different and their level of comfort with what they do or what is on their body, that's to each their own. Um, in 2019, I had a breast reduction because over the years, different body changes and hormones and diet changes and exercise, I've lost over 35 pounds, so my implants were way too big. So I did get a reduction, made them smaller, which I still wish they could be smaller, but I had to go with what I could at the moment. Um, no FFS. So I've not done anything on my face for surgeries. Um, and not that I'm against it. Trust me, I don't like having a square chin. My feel my nose is too big and my jaw is too strong but I'm afraid of facial surgery, if I'm honest. I've watched botched. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm afraid of doing something wrong, plus it's really expensive. So more power to everybody who's done it. They look amazing. But again, I'm too afraid, kind of a chicken. I struggled getting my wisdom teeth removed. So that's where I'm at. But full disclosure, I have had Botox twice because Let's be honest, as I said earlier, I'm almost 40. So yeah, anyway, next question. Um, believe it or not, I'm asked this a lot and I have a list here, that's what I keep looking at. Um, I get asked how tall I am 
almost daily. And I think it's because I talk a lot about basketball. At least that's one of the reasons. So a side note on that, I do still hope to play basketball. Um, it is still very much a passion and a dream of mine. I honestly feel that the past several years, I've kept myself too busy. It feels like an excuse after excuse after excuse, but moving to LA, it's very expensive. So I did have to find a job to have an apartment, to pay bills, so on and so forth. And you just kind of get distracted and pulled into life. Um, so I set aside, this, this was the year I was going to train and just take time off and really focus on just basketball, start playing in a few leagues. And then COVID happened and everybody's world got turned upside down. So that's been put on the back burner again. I can't play in any indoor courts because I don't have access. Um, outdoor basketball goals, they've taken the rims down, they've locked them up. They've pretty much said no basketball. Now the courts that still have rims, there's usually 20 to 30 people on those courts. And basketball is considered high risk because of all the sweat and stuff in the air. So I'm not risking getting sick just to go play with people I don't know. So I've had to put it on the side. Now, another reason I think people ask me about my height is because a lot of girls feel that maybe they're too tall. They don't want to stand out in a crowd. But I can tell you this, I've known girls who are five foot nothing, speaking of Carolina earlier, and other girls who are six foot seven and still rock six inch heels. Bat no eye, they rock it. Like they are so confident and it's amazing. Confidence is sexy. So I am five foot eight. I used to be five, nine and a half. I'm not shrinking because I'm old, so don't even go there. It's, I had a car accident in college and I jammed some discs in my back. So I shrunk a little bit or got jammed, I guess a little bit. So I lost some height, but I'm five, eight. When I wear heels, I'm six foot tall because I wear four inch heels at least. So if I go out to like say a grocery store or just out shopping and I'm wearing heels, yeah, I stand out in the crowd. I'm taller than some women. I'm taller than some men. It is what it is. Um, if you really think about it, female models, cis or trans, like to work in the industry, they look for 5'9 to 5'11, to 6 foot. So, you know, it's okay. I'm just saying rock your body, rock your height, rock who you are, just own it. Um, I can say that most of the time now I wear flats, like tennis shoes, because it's more comfortable. So I'm mostly 5'8". The next one, again, I could do a whole nother video on this, and that is, my hair is bothering me. Um, how did you tell your ex? How did you tell your family, come out to friends, so on and so forth? Um, I might still do another video on this because there's a lot to unpack there, but I'll try to shorten it really quick. For those of you who didn't know, yes, I was married for seven years. I was with her for 10 and I was really, really in love. So I tried to be very open and honest up front before we got married, but I didn't have the terminology. I didn't fully understand everything. And so I kind of opened the door, but really didn't fully open the door. I didn't know how to say things. Um, it felt like there would be acceptance. So I just kind of left it at that and moved on. And then over the years, I was kind of playing with and experimenting with my gender. And as things came out, I lied. I locked up, I was afraid, um, I denied things. And that was not the way to do it. So looking at me for advice, I can tell you how not to do it. That's about it. Um, eventually a wall got built up, led to divorce, which ultimately was the best thing because we were both able to move forward. I was able to live my truth. So I guess it was the best thing. Now telling my parents, um, I actually had phone calls with my dad and my mom separately, called my dad first. He was extremely accepting and loving. And 
it helped me so much as far as moving forward. My mom struggled. She was mad at me, um, not very thrilled. Took her a few years, but she did come around. And as far as telling friends from college, I did go to a Baptist college. I just basically came out on Facebook. That didn't go well either because of who my friends were. Um, I got preached at, I got talked down to. It just didn't work out great. Lost a lot of friends, most of my friends. But I had built up a support group around me so that that was okay. I kind of expected it. So really to tell somebody the best way to come out, I really couldn't tell you it is different for every person. It is just really, really important to have a support group. That I can tell you. That way, if you do face rejection um, or any kind of, I guess, backlash, at least you have people to fall back onto who will be there for you more than anyone could ever be. The next question is, why even say you're trans? You've fully transitioned. Just tell people you're a woman. You're a woman now. Move on with your life. Um, I lived... 30 years of my life hating everything about myself, um, self-loathing, constantly depressed, thinking about suicide so much. And once I finally moved past that and found my truth and my happiness, there is no way in hell I'll ever hide that because I'm proud of it. Um, I've had one of the most amazing experiences in life. I've been able to see life through two different lenses. And I'm thankful for that. Yes, being trans is only part of my identity, but it is such a huge central core part of my identity. Some people prefer to just move on with their lives, more power to them. For me, I think it's very, very crucial and critical, especially in today's society, for visibility. Um, I may be the first trans person that someone meets. So if I can help open their eyes, educate them a little bit so that their heart opens up, makes it easier for other people to approach them and be themselves, then that's what I'm here for. That's what I want to do. So. For me, just moving on with my life, not gonna happen. Not what I wanna do. I'm proud of who I am. Last question, it's kind of asked in a lot of different ways, um, is advice for transitioning. Um, where do I start? How do I start? Who do I talk to? Um, what hormones do I take? Where should I go for surgeries? Where should I move? Where, where can I find support? Um, really, it boils down to each person individually. But I can tell you this, the biggest pieces of advice that I could ever offer. First, seek a gender therapist, somebody to talk to that has studied it, that knows this, that you can kind of open up to and they can help walk you through things. Um, I lived in Waco, Texas. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere and didn't know what to do. So I researched it online. I found a great gender therapist in Dallas, Texas. She may still be around. Her name was Felicia Porter. Um, she would often do Skype sessions with people from all over the world. So that's a great resource. And it, and it was key. She provided me with a script to see a doctor so I could get started on hormones. So that's a huge first step so you can do things right. The next thing is to have a support group. I mentioned it earlier. Um, Things may not go great when you first start transition. So having people who understand, who accept, who love you, that's critical um, because it, it can be difficult. It gets to where it's amazing, but the first steps may be hard. So make sure you have that because know this, you are worthy of a life that you love that you find joy, that you find happiness because you're magical, you're beautiful, you're amazing. Don't live to satisfy someone else's idea of what you should be. You're not here to make them happy. 
You're here to live your life. So live it fully. Love who you are. So anyway, that's the heartfelt por portion of my q and It's kind of like my old videos. Um, it's really it today. Uh, it's really all the questions I kind of kept track of that are kind of the most pressing that everybody always asks. So <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. I hope you guys learned a little bit from me. Have a desire to stick around and watch more videos. Please, please, please leave comments, suggestions, anything below to let me know what you would like to see as far as content. Um, if you have other ideas or questions for me other than the ones that I've answered today, I love hearing from you guys and I try to respond every chance I get. Sometimes it takes a little while, but I try. Um, so stay tuned for other videos. I think the next one's going to be the dating one. So it'll be kind of interesting for sure, but I love you guys so, so much. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, even though it's been a crazy world, but just know that you guys are all amazing and loved. Bye.